Hi there. In this tutorial, I'd like to kind of uh, get close to finishing off our VR escape room series by talking about um, uh, aesthetics and performance, particularly in relationship to lighting. So you've probably noticed along the way that the shadows uh, look pretty janky <laughs> in this um, example we've been building. Um, and uh, also, in here, you might have noticed that um, some of the lighting and shadows is, leaves something to be desired in terms of graphical fidelity. Um, I've also, earlier in this project, I mentioned to you that, you know, both for gameplay hints, but also for performance on Quest 2, that we only ever wanted to have one um, real-time light on at any given moment. Um, so I was trying to limit that. But I've kind of been lying to you. There is a second real-time light um, in this room. It's this point light. Uh, and it's there because once the doors close, it gets pretty dark in here. Um, and, and there's another really real-time light, which is the directional light, the sun. Um, so what I'd like to do is not only improve the look of this uh, level, but also improve its performance by introducing the idea of baked lighting. Um, so what baked lighting is, is Unity kind of pre-computes uh, the, the lighting conditions on all of these various surfaces uh, and renders it beforehand and saves all those things essentially as textures um, so that uh, everything can look a lot better and it doesn't have to render all that lighting in real time. That all sounds great. A lot of upsides. The downside, of course, is that it can't... Um, have lights move and change and flicker and all of that kind of stuff. Um, baked lighting stays put. Uh, so what we're going to do is use baked lighting for all the surfaces and lights that don't move. And then we will just add to it with our one real time light that does change. Um, so here's my strategy. I'm going to set all the objects that do not move in the scene to static. Um, and here's how we do that. Um, you may have noticed, or you may never have noticed, that in the inspector, um, next to the you know active checkbox and the name for every um, game object, there is a, a tick box that says static. And if you tick that tick box, um, Unity will treat this object as something that is static and can receive um, baked lighting. Uh, so what we're going to do is think through all the objects that are static and um, make them set on static. This is another nice um, plus for having done sort of organization through childhood objects, because for example, all my things that live under decorations are all static and I can just hit static and it'll ask, do you want me to change children or just this object? And I can say change children. So now everything that's highlighted here, the trees, the rocks, all of it, uh, the, the brick walls, um, no, they're not, <laughs> they're under brick wall, but I can do the same thing to them. Um, so, uh, you know, as I go through these, it's pretty easy to set everything that is static to static. Um, there are times when you don't want that though, uh, I do want the yellow cube to be static, but the push button probably shouldn't be because it, um, it animates. Um, so I'm going to set this static, but say no, only this object. Um, same thing here. And uh, the brazier, sure, but only that. Um, and that's actually a lie because this is made of pieces, parts, the pillar and the bowl and those can be static. Um, so as you can see, I can hold uh, control on my keyboard, or I think it would be command on a Mac, um, and select multiple objects and, and set them static. Obviously, if you have a really complicated scene, this takes a while. Um, you could do it all in the end, or you could do it kind of uh, along the way as you build objects and you're like, yeah, this one will be static or this one won't. Um, so I'm gonna uh, to go ahead and finish this all out. And then I want to show you how we start working with baked lighting. So let's take a look at a light, because um, the next step is to set which lights should be baked and which should be real time. 
Um, so if we look at a light object like this point light, um, this is what's giving us some light inside the room when our doors are closed. Um, but right now, if you go down into its light component, you see it has a range and a color, and then it has mode, real time. And if we pull that down, you'll see there's a choice between real time, mixed, or baked. And if we switch this to baked, that's going to tell it um, that this is a light that uh, that shouldn't be treated real time. It should be baked only. Um, and so this kind of goes hand in hand with um, the lighting settings, which you can find under window, rendering, and then lighting. <clears throat> So by default, uh, this pops out as, a, as its own window, but I kind of like to just grab the tab and put it next to the inspector. Um, so wherever you prefer it in your interface, but I like it here. Um, and by default, in a new scene, you might have no lighting settings at all, but we're going to click New Lighting Settings. Um, and uh, this already has, um, under real-time lighting, it has uh, a choice that we could turn on for real-time um, global illumination, but that's the performance heavy. So we're going to um, do baked global illumination under mixed lighting. Um, the light mapper settings can more or less stay for now. Um, if you have a computer with a good um, uh, GPU, you could switch to your graphics card um, processing that, but um, a lot of my students would be using CPU because um, they're using laptops or, or Macs or things like that. Um, then this lighting um, window has multiple tabs underneath it. Um, it's got environment, real-time light maps, and baked light maps. And right now, there's no baked lighting data. But if we jump um, down to the bottom, there is a Generate Lighting button. And that's going to be the button that we either click, or we can even auto-generate if, if we want Unity to sort of constantly regenerate these light maps as we work. Um, this is going to bake our light maps. Um, but before we get there, I want to think about like what exactly do we want to bake in? Um, in this case, um, there are some conditions that I don't want um, baked in. I do think that I want to make sure the directional light is set on baked. Um, mine already was, but I think uh, by default it would not be. So we're going to make sure directional light is set on baked. So that'll be a baked light. The point light is set on baked, and then all the other lights I'm using, the spotlights and such, those won't be baked. Um, and then the other thing that I'm thinking about is, you know, this is kind of awkward, but this room changes. At, at one point uh, when we walk in, the doors will close. And while I kind of think that it looks cool that this um, light and shadow is streaming into the room, um, when the door appears, the light should go away. But in a baked light map, the light will not go away. It would still have that light along the floor, um, even though the door appears. Um, so that's an interesting problem. Uh, I can think of two solutions. One is that we could simply rotate um, this so that we don't have that problem. <laughs> um, I don't love that solution uh, because I think it looks better this way. Um, and so I'll show you another maybe sketchy solution. Um, but it, I'm just giving you the example as a way to think about like, okay, well, you know, the baked light map has its, its pluses and its minuses. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on this door and bake like this. Um, and then, um, the floor won't have this light streaming into it. It never will, but I still get the cool look of this um, shadow as I walk into my building, which I would lose if I moved the directional light. Um, the only downside I can imagine about this is there's going to be um, some um, right here where the where 
in the door jam, so to speak, this lighting information is probably going to get a little screwed up by doing it this way. Um, but you know, this is a strategy I just want to I want to demonstrate to you. Um, think about you know what condition you want your your environmental des design to be in when you bake, and then um, deal with the rest in real time lighting. So I'm clicking generate. Um, it takes a while. Uh, depending on your computer, it might take a long while um, or a short while. Uh, it tries its best to estimate um, how long it's going to take, and um, you will kind of be able to watch it uh, think through the um, the baked lighting. And as it uh, as it sort of achieves some sections, you'll see how um, much better it looks than it looked a moment ago when we were just working with real time lighting. After the time it takes to uh, to bake all those light maps, let's check out the results. Um, our shadows look much prettier, much more realistic, no more jagged sawtooth edge. Um, this is a cool effect where there's still light spilling out even in the shadow area from our baked point light. And as we come in here, um, what's going on in these corners where there's sort of like shadow just from the two planes meeting, that's the ambient occlusion setting. Um, so I ticked that on. I don't think that was on by default, um, but that gives you that, that sort of realistic look of um, two planes coming together. The light might not bounce as much there. It gets a little darker. Um, and so this whole space looks a lot more believable than it did before, um, even though it's still just just white cubes, you know, um, nothing high poly going on, just the light um, makes it look a, a, a lot more, um, you know, uh, high polish, <laughs> high production value. Um, it also means that even if we build this to Quest 2, um, it's still going to function really well uh, in terms of frames per second um, because it's it's going to look prettier yet not require anything of, of the processor, you know, in the mobile VR device. Um, so that's, uh, that's a real plus. The downsides, like, yes, there are some. Um, you know, you'll see the ambient occlusion, I think, is what's creating, like, you know, because I... I built this out of just cubes, you know, there's actually a seam there that we kind of didn't see before. And um, here, you know, this might be me being a little bit of uh, uh, sloppy work, you know, there might be a better solution for this. But here's as predicted in the door jam, there's going to be some problems um, with with my strategy of, um, you know, dealing with this non static object in the static light map. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of good enough for rock and roll, I'm pretty pleased with this result. It's much better than, um, than it had been. Um, and then the lighting settings, just so you know, uh, there are a lot of specific settings in terms of quality and, and how much um, you want it to, to go through when it's generating these, um, the size of the light maps, the quality of the shadows and things like that. And now that we do have a baked light map, um, here they are uh, as multiple kind of compressed, uh, in this case, 1024 by 1024 images. Um, and these are uh, saved with your project so it doesn't have to generate these again anew every time. It could, um, um, you know, you don't need to do it again until something significant changes in your level design and then you would generate lighting again.